Have you applied to cybersecurity jobs endlessly and are getting nowhere? If you don't use drugs, you can just about be anything you want to be. Stop it. Get some help. Hi, I'm Mad Hat. You may remember me from movies such as The Ski Mask. Spoken! Bat Mask Man. I'm the real Batman. No, I'm Batman. No, I'm Bat Mask Man. And the amazing Spider Mask Man. You are amazing. Thanks, I'm the amazing spider mask man. But my amazing acting years are long behind me, and I've retired into a 9-to-5 security analyst career. My journey through cybersecurity has been long and hard. That's what she said! <laughs> I'm here to tell you five reasons why you're not getting a cybersecurity job. Five possible ways that you are failing yourself and your family. Dishonor on your whole family! Dishonor on you! Dishonor on your cow! I'm just, I'm just kidding. You could never dishonor your cow. Now, these are things I've noticed are common with everyone that is struggling to get into cyber, myself included, when I started applying for jobs, and also things people need to understand before they start applying for jobs. Reason one, your lack of knowledge. You might not be as qualified as you think you are. I know this might scare some of you suffering from crippling imposter syndrome, but someone needs to tell people, like my coworker who thinks he's hot shit, that you don't know as much as you think you know, that you don't know as much as you pretend to know just because you were hired before somebody else. But that's a separate issue coming up. So seriously, how much do you really know about cybersecurity? Do you know how to get into a computer system logs? Check resource utilization for abnormally high usage? Take a memory dump of your system to preserve its state and read the dump file for anomalous behavior? How about set up a virtual machine from scratch from start to finish with safe configurations to allow for an analysis for an executable? Deep network packet analysis? Various exploits like heap overflow? Cross-site scripting, SQL injections? Do you know how someone can establish persistence on an endpoint and how to investigate it? Do you even CMD? Anyways, think about it. I'll wait. It's time to f***ing take some souls. See all these instructors out here, all their f***ing jackets, drinking coffee, I want to f***ing space to go straight up and f***ing numb. So do you really know all that? Now this isn't to scare anybody off, but you need to at least be familiar with everything I mentioned. And of course, even more than that, everyone is quick to pick up cybersecurity certificates doing exactly what you should not be doing, which is studying for the certificates to pass and not actually committing yourself to understanding the subject matter that's covered in the certificate. This brings us to reason two lack of patience. You are being impatient in your studies. Everyone's looking for the fast path, the fast track, the fast pass to a job. I want a job and I want it now. I want it yesterday. Give it to me now. <laughs> Just slow down a little bit if you need to. Everyone learns at different speeds. I keep seeing opinions and comments on the Google cybersecurity certificate, for example, saying to just quickly gloss over the topics and get to the security plus as quick as possible. That is not the point of programs like the Google CyberCert. Are you taking the network section and attempting to build a home lab with it? Are you taking the Python section and trying to write some basic malware with Python? Or are you just reading and listening and jumping through the hoops? Anyone can study for an exam with enough time and memorization of the concepts, but not everyone is willing to learn the material and actually build on it. Combine concepts even, and allow the knowledge to flow through you like a cyber Swiss army knife. It's what the Japanese call Unagi. To save in your arsenal or when you need to use it for an investigation or audit or penetration test or what have you. Even the hands-on exams like the OSCP can be completed with enough memorization of commonly used tactics and just regurgitating those tactics during the exam via commonly used tools and methodologies. Are you even understanding how the exploit works or are you just doing it because you memorized how to use it? There's people who pass the OSCP and then there's people who make OSCP their bitch. <laughs> Who do you think is gonna get a job easier? Do you see where I'm going with this? Don't be going through attempting to just gloss over the little details because you're impatient and don't wanna put in the time and work. If you're not putting the time, blood, sweat, and late night tears, you gotta ask yourself, are you really interested in this? Reason three, lack of passion. Yeah, I know this is a broken record. The most important question you gotta ask yourself right now is, do you like computers? How much on a scale of one to donut? If it's anything less than a seven, then you might need to reconsider your life choices. Or maybe open up a Krispy Kreme because we definitely need more of those. The closest one to me is two hours away and I need me some Krispy Kreme donuts. Do you see yourself staring at a computer screen for 16 to 24 hours a day? Because that's the reality of it. Now you don't have to be the craziest, most passionate person in the world about cybersecurity, but you have to at least be interested enough 
to learn the material adequately. And your interest in the field is going to be very evident during job interviews. Hiring managers are going to want to hire somebody who's keeping up on the trends and the latest exploits and people who want to further their understanding in the field and want to continuously learn. It is just that type of job, which makes it more fun in my opinion, or at the very least not as boring as most jobs. Reason four, lack of jobs. <laughs> no, this does not mean that there's a scarcity of available cybersecurity jobs. As it stands, the cybersecurity application process is ass. Through no fault of any one particular reason, it's just the perfect storm of shit. The job market for cybersecurity is in a state of high demand, but low supply of qualified individuals. This creates a job market where there's this massive pool of people interested in the field and wanting to apply, so they shoot their shot at any job labeled cyber. This causes every job to quickly become inundated with a lot of applicants. Wait. Do you think technical recruiters and hiring managers have the time and energy to look at the thousands upon thousands of applicants for these jobs? Probably not. So they utilize automatic scanners to suss out the best of the lot. Or best case scenario, they skim over each resume for 30 seconds and toss your resume at any sign of failure. I can smell the failure. So if your resume isn't flawless with plenty of eye candy like certificates and projects, <laughs> then you're setting yourself up for a very bad time. Reason five. Lack of persistence. How many jobs have you applied to? How many of the jobs have you tailored your resume to the job description? How many hiring managers have you reached out to? How many people in the industry have you spoken to? According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, cybersecurity employment for positions like information security analyst is predicted to grow by 30% by 2031. And the average cybersecurity salary is pretty dang good. It's also not uncommon for overqualified individuals to accept the job simply because they are sick of doing the job application process. This is what my coworker fails to realize, that tenure does not equal intelligence. Now I'm not saying that I'm a genius, but I did accept my job currently simply because it was remote, because I hate commuting to work and sitting in traffic sucks the life out of your soul. But this type of behavior is common in cybersecurity because it takes too long to find a job. You get people who will settle for a job and will want to quit shortly after because they feel underpaid, underappreciated, but worst of all, they have to deal with egotistical smart asses who love to speak down to people. Do you think you know better than me? You should be sitting in my chair and I should be sitting all the way down there in yours. In order to combat this shit application environment that we find ourselves in, you have to make sure to apply to as many jobs as possible and not just the remote jobs because those are the most sought after ones available. If your resume is lacking in the experience and certification department, then you need to prioritize applying to jobs that are local, not necessarily remote. That doesn't mean you can't get them, that just means they're harder to get. And for that being said, in order to land a job in cybersecurity, you need to treat the job application process like a job, as in you have to put in the eight hours a day of applying every day. That is, once you feel adequately knowledgeable for the position that you're looking for. A friend of mine actually had the audacity to complain about not hearing back from anyone after applying to only 10 jobs. It's also not important to just persistently apply, but ensure that you are applying to jobs that you are capable of doing and your resume says that you are capable of doing. Even if a job listing has the same title as another, the job's day-to-day -day responsibilities are going to vary and they will almost never be exactly the same from company to company. That's because every company has their own unique needs for that job position. So if you're not applying to jobs the smart way, then you're doing it wrong. So are you guilty of any one of the five deadly failures? You're still a failure. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Good luck out there. Oh.